Okay, so in the previous video, we had this picture, okay, where we explored what the second derivative can do for us and what it can tell us, okay? And we found that there was this problem, this problem that if you substituted in x equals a, so at a stationary point and you got the second derivative to be zero, then it actually didn't tell you what type of stationary point it was, okay? And so we had to do a little bit more investigative work to look at the gradient either side of the stationary point to tell what type it is, okay? Now, in this, we've looked at these stationary points of inflection and we've introduced those and the reason why I wasn't just calling them points of inflection was because points of inflection is a more general term. Um, so, in the previous video, I had this diagram. Uh, we had this cubic, and I differentiated it. And if you look at the stationary points, was where the first derivative crosses the x-axis and we're going from a positive gradient to negative to positive okay and then we had the second derivative and that stationary point there was where this one crosses okay and we have this diagram here right now what you might notice from this is that at this point the second derivative is zero. Okay? That point, the second derivative is, is zero. If we follow that up back up to the original curve, it identifies a specific point on that cubic. And it's the point where you're actually going from this, well, we're going in a clockwise motion around the curve, and then we change to going anti-clockwise around the curve. It's actually where we would say that the curve is going from being concave to convex. And that change in concavity, okay, that point where it changes, is actually important to us and that is what we call a point of inflection in general. So in actual fact, if I'm looking at my curve here, then at these points of inflection, these stationary points of inflection, we are going from, well this is concave, sorry convex, okay, because, well con, the way to remember it, okay, which is very easy to forget, okay? The way to remember it is that concave looks like a cave, <laughs> right? So uh, it looks like you're going into a cave. That's concave. And convex looks like that, okay? It's the other way up. So I kind of think like convex is like a satellite dish pointing off into the sky, okay? So we're going from convex and then to concave. And so these are points where the curve is changing from concave to convex or vice versa, okay? We are concave to convex, okay? However, they are not the only points in my curve where that happens because you're going here concave and then there's going to be a point where you start going convex, okay? So there is a point here where that changes, and likewise, here we've got concave, and then there's going to be a point where I start going convex. And here we're going convex, and then we're going concave. So these three points here that I've identified aren't stationary points of inflection. They are just referred to as points of inflection. Okay, so this is a point of inflection. Okay, so we've identified that that is when the second derivative 
is zero. Okay, so what we're actually finding is that points of inflection occur, general points of inflection, non-stationary points of inflection occur when the second derivative is zero. However, okay, there's always a but to this, isn't there, right? However, if you found that um, it's a second derivative is zero, but one of those points is a stationary point, okay? So if you were just solving the equation, putting the second derivative equal to zero, and you get a couple of values, say, but one of those points is a, a stationary point, then that doesn't tell you that it's a point of inflection. We know that because from our previous uh, previous kind of looking at this, the second derivative being zero at a stationary point doesn't tell you anything. Okay, so there is a very subtle thing that you're going to have to consider when you look at points of inflection and finding points of inflection. Okay, so points of inflection, it's important that you understand that a point of inflection is where the curve goes from convex to concave or vice versa. Okay, so not only do you have to make sure that the second derivative is zero, that it's not a stationary point, okay, but also that the curve goes from positive to negative for its second derivative as well. So it goes from concave to convex or vice versa. You need to do those checks, otherwise you don't know, okay. Unless you have a shape, so you can see the shape of the curve, if you don't know what the curve looks like, Okay, you don't have enough information. Okay, and I'll show you an example of this uh, in the coming videos.